Perfect. Oh, awesome. Okay. So for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm Gretchen. My husband Leighton and I are farming over in Central Hawke's Bay. Uh, about nine years ago, we created Cloud Farmer as a result of a problem that we had on farm, where all these solutions come from. Um, someone frustrating and wanting to do something about it. Um, basically, in our case, we got sick of chasing and, um, and nagging for bits of paper and always you know, printing things off and information being kept in lots of different places, um, from, from the front of the motorbike to all over the kitchen table. Um, and basically decided there had to be a better way. So when we started this about nine years ago now, seven, yeah, uh, eight, nine years ago, yep. Yeah, uh, it was originally based on the digital version of the diary, but um, faster, worked offline. Um, back then we didn't have Wi-Fi, uh, rural broadband or um, mobile reception. Um, and, and it's obviously evolved a lot since then. And now it's sort of become the, day, day, the key day-to-day -day operational recording tool for, uh, for our clients across the country. Um, and as a result of both our farming business and uh, you know, obviously my involvement with Cloud Farmer, I'm particularly aware that the wave of compliance coming at us, it, it, it's really daunting. It's pretty darn overwhelming at the moment. So I've got a real passion um, and a real interest in how we're gonna take farmers on this journey. It's all very well to say, this is what we want. How are we gonna how are we gonna help our farmers get there? How are we gonna lift their expectations and understanding of what good management practices look like? Often we're so inside our own little world, we we don't know what we all think we're in the top 10, 20%, don't we? That's that lovely stat. Um, and how are we gonna provide how are we gonna provide proof to our markets and, and meet these ever-increasing social expectations? Um, and it's really hard because it's not like we're in a factory where everything's automated, especially you know, us sheep and beef farmers. Um, it's, it's really hard to, to provide that proof of what we're doing. Um, so in my experience, the majority of farmers love farming, um, but don't particularly like office work. That's why, we, why we're often farmers. Um, and rightly or wrongly, one thing that I hear a lot is how stressful this particular view you're looking at at the moment can be. For some reason, people see the orders coming up the driveway and um, it's often preceded by a few frantic days beforehand, trying to find bits of paper, going through various notebooks, copying copying um, records into your drench diary with a good old four-colored pen. Um, the old blame game of uh, whose responsibility it is for the shonky paper filing system. Um, and yet we're often farming because we like being our own boss. Um, we like being the fact that we're accountable to ourselves and, and I suppose to our animals. And we perceive being told how to farm, whether it's uh, whether that's having what feels like a swarm of new environmental rigs thrown at us or an auditor going through our record books. A bit like someone coming and telling us, it actually often feels a bit like someone coming and telling you how to do your, how to bring up your own children. Um, we, we're all doing the very best job we can and we don't really like being critiqued. Um, so yeah, so, um, Gary and Jason have asked me to talk about a touch a bit on on how answering that how the digital um, technology can reduce some of the pain and has and has and how it can help facilitate better management systems. So on that, I've probably got three key messages, and do you know what? they're actually really simple at the end of the day. So my first first key message for you guys this evening is, um, and you've heard all this already, it's not going away. Um, so instead of fighting it or ignoring it, we just need to get on with it, quite frankly. Um, none of us like change. We're not programmed wired to like change as human beings. And certainly none of us like to feel like that we're being told what to do. Uh, but if you're looking for a silver lining in all of this compliance, it is going to make us better farmers. Production, planet, people, you know, we all know we could be doing it, at doing it better. There's always tweaks, always room for improvement. The second point I wanted to talk about, I wanted to emphasize is all of this stuff isn't actually that hard. And the reason it's not hard is because a lot of this we're already doing. The trick is to make sure that we've got proof that we're doing it. Um, and the way to do that is to record it. Our exporters are being asked for increasing levels of proof of what their suppliers, so us farmers are doing. And our um, traditional approach of, trust me, we're doing it, it's fine. Just, it doesn't come us anymore. Um, 
wasn't it longer that we trusted that someone in Wuhan wasn't keeping pangolins, pangolins and bats in the same cage? And um, yeah, look where it's got us now. Uh, so yeah, so a lot of this, as I say, guys, you're already doing. We just need to, to record it so we've got proof behind it. Um, and that takes me into my third point, uh, which is if you're going to record it, make it easy. Um, if it's not quicker than using your notebook, or if it takes longer to record it than it does the actual job, forget it. And also, when you're doing this, have a think about how that data um, needs to be used. So most auditors I've met aren't hugely technical. Um, they just want to be able to see the information as quickly and easily as possible. So they don't want to be bamboozled trying to get their head around it all. Um, they don't want to be sitting here politely while you trawl through your um, pile of paperwork, hoping that the piece you need is lurking in there somewhere. Murphy's Law, it's the piece you want to see over there anyway. Um, and even, so if we touch on sort of farm environment plans, I was talking to a consultant the other day who was saying that the, their biggest cost when creating a farm environment plan is their time. And it's their time crawling through that paperwork or um, trying to use your software to dig out the, all the information they want. They would just want that there at their fingertips. And she was telling me it um, can save up to 20 hours per farmer if your information is just easy to, if they can export it straight out. So um, yeah, I can tell you now 20 hours of consultant is uh, not, not the cheapest. Um, sure, Gary will tell you that farm consultants are worth every penny, but um, their, their time is better uh, utilized rather than sorting paper, trying to find bits and pieces. Um, and there are digi different digital um, options out there for recording. We talked about a couple of them before. Before There's us and Farm IQ. Um, we've got, got, both got quite different value propositions. So we often um, recommend them and they recommend us depending on what farmers need. Um, and that's, that's a lot large part of this. It's, it's horses for courses. Different people have different needs. Um, there's another one called resolution. Um, a lot of uh, people, actually the majority are still using pen and paper. There's a couple of Aussie ones coming around, uh, coming into the market at the moment. I'm not quite sure how they go about New Zealand compliance because it's obviously designed for the Australian market. Um, not sure on that one. And, and there's, there's probably a couple of others that maybe I don't know about, but um, and so the biggest one is the paper-based one. Um, and so I'm probably best to, best to sort of stick to talking about um, why digital is, is better than that paper-based one. And I can I can show you examples of how we do it. Obviously, I can't really show you examples of how others do it, but I can give you some practical examples of how we do it. Um, and the great thing about using a digital tool is, at the end of the day, it makes it super easy to keep all your information in one place, whether that's for compliance purposes or team communication, health and safety planning. Um, it's all literally there at your fingertips. <clears throat> So I'm going to show you some examples of how recording information digitally on cloud Farm can remove some of the hassle and pain. So on your right hand side of the screen, you can see a little phone. So just move the video screens to the side if, if, it, if, if my face is covering that at the moment, because I'm going to play that as a wee video. Um, and, and this is, I'll see if I can get it up. Actually, I'm going to move you all to the side because you're sitting in front of mine. So this is, if say you're out the back of the farm and I don't know, drenching some sheep, this is what you'd do. You'd go and click uh, treatments, add a new entry. And so this is just how, you, this, is, this is exactly a screen recording from my phone that I just tried to do earlier to prevent technology. So we're gonna be doing um, 441 new hoggets, drench, um, got lots of drop down boxes because no one can ever spell the names of drenches, that's for sure. Um, they learn a word like heifer. Uh, put all your information in there. So it's obviously um, encouraging best practice. If you don't put this information in there, it doesn't, you know, it's not going to, the computer's not going to say no. You can take a photo. A lot of our clients take photos of the batch number and expiry date and put it on later. But um, it just, it's just setting that, um, those expectations of what good management practices are. Um, and, you know, you're actually having to check the expiry date, God forbid, and, um, <laughs> and think about these things. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, put any comments that you want in there, um, stud hoggets or draft it off the tail or whatever it happens to be. And then um, one of the great features about it is you can take a photo. So whether that in this case it's taking a photo of a drench container, maybe taking a photo of a job that needs doing, taking a photo to prove that you've, um, I don't know, uh, training records 
it's all, all nice and simple. Um, yeah, and literally quicker than using your notebook and obviously a lot more legible. So there's some, some other cool things in there, like the fact that it's in a consistent format, um, taking that photo, being able to search and export data off really easily for further analysis, so being able to create reports, um, eliminates that old, whole double handling. And if you've got staff or someone helping you, um, they record it. So if they were the one who, I don't know, load out your lambs or dredge them, whatever it happened to be, they put into Cloud Farmer as they do it. Um, and in a second, I'm going to show you how it looks on the desktop version because it's in a table format, um, which means that uh, it, it's just super easy for the order to run, run the eye down. At, at, at a glance, they can see that everything is there, which is, which is what Pat's team want. They just want it to be simple and easy. Um, for you and, and, and for their team. Um, and also, obviously, if it's stored in the cloud, you are never going to lose that information. Um, yeah, so here's just a couple of examples. I'll just run through these really quickly, but I just wanted to show you some actual pr practical examples of how it looks. So one thing that I'll also often ask for is they want a copy of an ASD form and they want the fill sheet beside it. So by putting it into your phone, this is what it looks like on the desktop. They can see at a glance that you've got all your ASD forms on there, all the kill sheets beside, the, beside it. Um, yeah, nice and easy. Um, and I should actually clarify, most of our clients use the phone while they're out on the farm to capture the information. And then they use the desktop version. This is what we're looking at at the moment for doing customizing or um, just viewing it on the bigger screen or do, doing analysis. Um, what have we got here? So transactions and transfers. So these are sales of, um, you're selling some feed. Some of the stuff you actually have to do for your greenhouse gas equations as well. Uh, that's the thing, a lot of this information used for multiple purposes. Sorry, I just went backwards there. Um, deaths is one that in New Zealand we haven't traditionally been as big on overseas. It's a really big deal, especially after they've had, um, what, what's the big precursor behind that all? Mad cow, one of the ones. Um, Oh, foot and mouth, I think, was was it really, really um, ramped up the requirements around recording deaths. So um, how it died, where it died, how you disposed of it, uh, you know, all your fit, put all your records on there, um, your um, spray records, your, uh, I think for greenhouse gases, we have to keep a record of how much uh, feed we've got on hand, all this good stuff. A lot of our clients are really active in terms of environmental records. And I pop that in there because it's just a really good example of something that I've come, in my experience, some farmers are doing really, really well. And you wouldn't know. No one talks about it. And they, they also don't have any proof. So that's the other thing. You know, we need to be able to, um, we need to, be able to tell our story. And we've, we've got, no, we can, it's all very well saying, oh, we've been doing great stuff. We're always planting. We've got no proof behind it. So um, just another way of doing that. Um, and some of the screenshots I didn't show were health and safety. So we've got the full beef and lamb health and safety system on there. Uh, things like Pat talked about RVM, so restricted veterinary medicines, um, chemical inventory, diary paint. You know, the, the great thing about technology is all that information sits in that one place. And you use that information in multiple ways. You know, you might be putting your um, docking tallies in there, but you need those for your stock reconciliations and for um, lots of other purposes. So, um, yeah, hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight into how, you know, and just shows you how actually simple it is to record that information and how, um, you know, how technology can really help with that. Uh, if we're talking about proof and ease of access to information, then the reality is pretty, pretty shortly that that paper version is just not, it's not going to cut the mustard, quite frankly. The four coloured pen and soggy notebook, um, is, you know, they're, they're on borrowed time. Um, and the great thing about utilizing a tool such as such as this or any of the other good and the other technical, uh, any of the other tools out there is they encourage good management practices. And at the end of the day, it's going to make us more aware and, uh, and better farmers overall. So, um, yeah, we sort of say you can, you know, we can either ignore this and hope it's just going to go away, which it's not, or we can do something about it. We can, and, and the key to finding a solution to it is, is make sure it's one that fits for your business. Um, so depending on what you need, if it's um, analysis, if it's simplicity, if it, whatever it happens to be, um, there's, there's some good options out there. Um, yeah, and yeah, and so we um, and also have a go at doing this. So we do um, offer a trial. I think most of the other programs do as well. You can actually have a go for yourself instead of putting it in the too hard basket. 
um, and have a go at recording this information, see what benefits it brings to your business. Any questions? Just, just while if there's any any questions, just I just thought I'd come up with a comment. There, Gretchen, you made the comment there before. I've got a client that uses your um, uh, uses your software, and I've also got a client that uses FarmIQ. And what they find, I find they do a lot of that uh, stuff in the paddock or in the in the sheep yards, you know, of um, just putting that numbers in straight away. But when it comes to a lot of the cropping and fertilizer things, they find it's a lot simpler to do that um, in the office when they've got the, you know, the might be the Ravensdown report or the the spread map or whatever. So, so they use they yeah, tend to use both of the, the different um, forms, whether it's desktop or the phone. Yeah, some of that stuff that needs to be recorded immediately. I had a client say to me the other day, the biggest thing for them is um, they they just want to come home. <laughs> have a beer and sit down with the kids. And that's been the biggest game changer for them is being able to collect that information in the field and it literally being um, quicker than, than doing it on paper, just getting their evenings back. But yeah, some of it like, um, like health and safety, I tend to sit down every now and then and you know, once a month, right, I'm going to do this and we'll make sure we update it. And I like doing that on the on the computer, same with my chemical inventory, um, which I'm not quite as good as I should be. Um, Whereas other things, it's just so much easier to do it there and then before you forget. Just a question there about the, the cost for a standard farm to use, cost of your product? Um, so our so we're a little bit different. So um, we charge a one-off fee. So we charge a thousand bucks and that's um, to get you, there's a lot of customizing and setting it up and things like that. So I'd say to containers a drench. And then it starts at $55 a month for one to three users. And I think it's um, 80 uh, but uh, might be you know, might be seventy odd bucks a month actually for um three to seven users, um whereas Farm IQ is by the number of stock units I think and they have different tiered levels. Um, we looked at that and actually just found farmers just want everything they you know they there's not it's all so interrelated. Um, I found it hard to pull it out. Um, and I'm not quite sure how the other models work. A lot of models are straight um subscription, but we're a bit of a hybrid with that a one off fee and then a lower monthly subscription. Yeah, the other thing, I was going to say, the other thing when you're talking about some um, costs and things is to look at, when you're looking at different software, make sure you can get the data out. There's nothing worse if you've been using something for a while and you, I don't know, you want to change or finish or whatever and you can't get information out. So being able to export it to print or PDF or Excel or whatever it happens to be is something to always look at. Uh, good comment there. I had to pull out someone's data the other day who uses a very antiquated banking financial system but they had all their lamb sales in Cloud Pharma. Well, I'll tell you what, it was brilliant just to be able to put that into Excel. Saved me a lot of work. But anyway, Pat, a question for Pat and getting information out. I guess, Pat, you mentioned before that uh, something like Cloud Pharma is quite useful for you. And is it something that maybe we sh they need, everyone needs to look at some sort of access or some reporting to, to make your guys' life easier? So I guess, I guess the, the primary tools would be... Um, through the tools such as Cloud Pharma, we're, we're um, actually collecting the information and obviously <clears throat> there's reports that come out of those systems. When we do an order, we do a 100% digital process um, and we send those sort of digital reports through to farmers pretty much as soon as they're completed, they get emailed if there's any non-conformances, they we get farmers to sign off a piece of paper um, <clears throat> on the day, um, saying that this yeah there's been an audit happen and that there may be agreeing to some um, target dates for NC closures. But in terms of um, yeah the actual audit reports, they come through um, yeah pretty much straight after the audit. Oh, you muted there, Gary. Thank you. I typing in, typing at the same time as talking. I was trying to be quiet. I uh, just uh, any last questions or any other comments from anyone? Um, anything else, uh, Megan, that you wanted uh, to cover that we've missed? No, I'm good. Thank you, Gary. That's cool. I just remember we we did start with your presentation, so make sure we haven't forgotten anything. <laughs> Okay, no, that's cool. Just there's a, there's a couple of key things I 
Yes, I listen listening to that and, and so I had the we also did this at lunchtime as well and picked up a number of things. And so I guess the 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 FA the FAT program is relatively new, but I guess it has combined a whole lot of other programs together, which is which is increasing efficiency, which is really, really good. And obviously something quite good that's come out of RMPP, um, which is which is good for our industry. Um uh, I guess the dairy sector, maybe they've got something to do and to, to join. That would be good to see them on board, I would have thought. Um, and good to see that the um, the other templates and things like farm environment plans and those sort of things, if we can bring them all together, would be would be quite good for the farming community rather than having, you know, seven different folders to pull off the shelf. It'd be nice just to pull off one and give it to somebody or just, hey, here it is all online in one, in one program. Yep, I agree. And, uh, and I guess, Pat, you talked about, um, you know, you the objective for your business would be to be nice, efficient, and and, and quicker, and and things like travelling time and and having having the the farmers ready for their uh, assessment would be quite good. And the, I think that self assessment form would be very useful. In fact, I'm quite keen to get hold of it and send it around to some people. I'm just interested to see how how organised people are, and 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 good solutions around di digital records. Hey, there's nothing wrong with hard copy, but um, you know, hard copy doesn't work very well after the diary goes through the washing machine, does it, Gretchen? So. We hear that one a lot, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah so. Someone, someone told me the other day they literally had a dog eat their notebook. Like, sure, yeah. That was that was that was their school excuse, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard this one before, but I don't think it was yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so I guess there is online options out there, and, and we've mentioned a few. Plus, also, um, Gretchen's going to run down about about her products. So, um, if there's if there's no last questions, we'll call it to a close, and I'll say uh, thank you very much to our speakers for coming on board. And uh, and uh, yeah, and thanks for everyone for, for joining in and cheers for the